Hello, I'm Dr. Kimora Scotland, a urologist at UCLA, and we're here to talk today about how to know if you have a kidney stone. So who forms kidney stones? Well, it turns out that it's quite common. About 11% of Americans will have a kidney stone. It used to be that men would have more kidney stones than women, but those numbers have gotten a lot closer over the last few decades. And 50% of folks with kidney stones will have more than one. Generally, they peak during the ages of 20s to the 50s, but we've noticed that that extends now to older folks and in kids. But what is a kidney stone? Well, they're aggregations or deposits of crystals and salts that form in the kidney. What we see here is a kidney with a stone. And generally speaking, most people with kidney stones don't have any pain. That's mostly because the kidney stones are just sitting in the kidney. They don't cause any problems. But why do kidney stones cause pain? Generally, kidney stones that are in the kidney don't cause pain. But if they fall into the ureter, and they can get stuck there. And that can cause pain, which we'll describe a little bit later. Another way this can happen is that stones that are still in the kidney can move to the top of the ureter. And as those stones move back and forth, patients will tell me that their pain goes and comes. A third and a little bit more rare way that kidney stones can form pain is by sitting in the kidney. Sometimes stones can cause pain without obvious obstruction. But it is much more common that those stones will be in the ureter. And how does that cause pain? Well, unfortunately, the ureter is quite tiny. It's only about three to four millimeters. Most people with stones that are less than five millimeters, generally about two millimeters to four millimeters, will still have pain because the stone causes irritation to the ureter. But generally, you find that patients with stones that size are able to pass them. Unfortunately, for stones that are larger than five millimeters, there's a much decreased chance that the stones will pass, and that again is because of the size of the ureter. And what happens here in a stone that's larger is that it causes spasms in the ureter, and those spasms can be caused just because of irritation to the ureter, but also because of increased pressure at the ureter as it's trying to expel the stone. Another way that stones can cause pain is actually in the kidney. When you have a stone blocking the ureter, bear in mind that the kidney continues to make urine. And so unfortunately what happens is that urine hits the stone and backs up into the kidney, causing swelling. And this distension of the kidney can cause quite a bit of pain. That is why, out of the many ways that kidney stones form pain, back pain is normally the most common. A lot of patients will say that the pain is very different from any other pain that they've had. They're not able to sit still at all. It's so painful. You can also have flank pain, and that pain moves from the back and radiates round to the front. A lot of times, the pain from a ureteral stone can change as that stone moves down the ureter. And so here, if you look at the urinary system moving from the kidney down to the ureter and into the bladder, as the stone moves, you can have different symptoms. As the stone moves closer to the bladder, you may have pain that extends down to the groin or the genitals. You may have pressure in the bladder. And some people will complain of urgency, where they feel like they need to urinate all the time. You can also have burning with urination and a slow or interrupted urinary stream. How do we pass our stones? Well, the number one recommendation is to drink lots of water. We recommend that you drink at least three liters of water a day, as that helps to increase the urine that you make, which in itself will help to move the stone through the ureter. Also, for those people with pain, NSAIDs are the first line treatment. NSAIDs are medications like ibuprofen, Aleve, Advil, Naproxen. Also for folks with nausea, Anti-nausea medications can be obtained over the counter. And some patients will be given Tamsulosin or Flomax, which is a medication that relaxes the ureter so that the stone is able to pass into the bladder. 
Finally, some patients tell me that warm compresses do help. So what to do when you pass the stone? Well, first and foremost, you need to collect it. You can use a strainer, which you can get most times at the urgent care or emergency room if you present there, or you can get them from a pharmaceutical supply store. And the reason we collect the stones is so that we can analyze them to figure out what kind of stones you form. If you have not definitely passed the stone, please see a doctor to get follow-up imaging to confirm. And that can take the form of an ultrasound, an x-ray, or a CAT scan. The reason I'm recommending this is that sometimes kidney stone pain goes away. And if you're not sure that you've actually seen the stone, the stone may actually still be in the ureter and that can cause problems down the line. Let's talk about recurrent stones. I mentioned earlier that 50% of patients with a kidney stone will have another one. This happens particularly within five years if there are no changes made to prevent stones. If you have more than one stone, I recommend that you see a urologist so you can talk about stone prevention. Stone prevention workup will involve blood tests, as well as urine tests and analysis of stones. Thank you for your attention. I should mention here that we will be having multiple additional talks so that we can discuss all aspects of kidney stones.